Hi everyone and happy Monday. This is Dee and I have with me the lovely Heather sitting here next to me. We're hiding out in a bedroom to try and be quiet and hide from children. And we have Lisa Harrison and Bob Wright with us. And we're going to sit down right now and do this conversation and explain everything from the beginning to the end. Right, Heather? No pressure. No pressure. Everything from the beginning to the end. As we were just saying that um, the article that I wrote on Saturday went viral over Facebook and, and various media sites. Um, we're going to be seeing a lot of people hearing this radio interview and, and not really having any basic background. They'll be hearing this fresh and new. So we're going to start off with a quick review of the value system and who has the value, what is the value, and the lies that have been perpetrated on everyone on this, I'd say planet, but it goes beyond that, um, as to what value actually is. So let's start from the beginning. Heather, darling. We oh. are the value. Yes. The... Um... What we have here is essentially we went in and the banking systems as everyone has seen in different news, different media, um, they've had some problems. In 2008, you saw a lot of bubbles and everything else and just nothing moved. No, no money moved because that's what everyone was told was the value, was the money. Currencies, paper, gold, silver. Um, and really they shied away from the gold and the silver and really tried to have people focus on the paper and the coins. Um, so essentially what has happened is that there was uh, a public trust and it was at one time called the One People's Public Trust, which was a tool that was used to be able to go in and grab everyone's value and return it to them near simultaneous to the grab. And essentially the only thing that they could take was the title and ownership, but through deceptive acts and practices and fraud. And so it all boils down to banking. Banking is the one thing that crosses all borders, whether perceived planetary, perceived universal, and this, what some call the slavery system, was actually much greater than what everyone saw or had experienced. Um, so that's really the cap of what occurred up to this point was that a few of us who knew the system and knew people within the systems, uh, everyone worked together in a collaborative effort, some quite anonymously, some uh, with certain amounts of deniability, but everyone worked very hard to bring this to a close. So what happened was basically everything runs on commercial uh, it's what is called the Commercial Registry, Uniform Commercial Codes in the U uh, U.S. However, all the banks, all the central banks, uh, each country actually is a corporation operating under the guise of the people's governments from any nation that you can think of. And those D, uh, from removing the shackles, uh, American Kabuki, Calipele, Brian, uh, Lisa, Bob, Chris, everyone brought that to light, um, was able to actually show people the documentation and where to go on these purported government sites to actually grab the corporate registries. And we will publish, actually, I'll go back, backtrack through all of the papers and we will publish all the links again so that people can go back and um, refer to the links where all this information is filed. So basically, I started with that public trust in March of March 6 of 2011, and from there, it's, and I can only speak to the experience that I had. Um, it's been a wild ride, and there have been a lot of banker resignations. There have been whole governments that uh, purported governments that have resigned after lunch, and um, lots of ministry officials, lots of arrests. Um, so you can actually see. The movement, if someone were to put all those dots in one place where you could actually see them, you would see the effects. And 
Um, so that's the, the trust tool was a huge tool. And then it was retired, reconciled, actually. Reconciled. Reconciled into what is, which is essentially every being on the planet and actually every embodiment in the universe is value. They are their, they are eternal essence. Um, I don't get into the religions because those are basically for me, from my knowledge base uh, and experience in bank trade and finance are just tools that were used for harvesting um, and management, con control management of the actual value and their assets um, is that every being is the value. So eternal essence there, some people call it a soul. Um, but it really is about energetics. Everything is about energetics. So all of that value was returned, title, ownership, full custody. It never left the embodiments, but it's sort of like a house. You, if you steal a house, you don't, you either go in and possess it, but it's always there. You don't move it. Um, or you steal it by title and paper essentially, which is what all the banks which is have been banks doing. Did. So let's go back and just, just a quick review again for people who are brand new to this. Okay. We talk about the value. Right. So the people being the value mm -hmm. is a very literal thing. If you want to know a little more about this, I want you to go out and Google straw man and your straw man account. Um, the value is apparent in all the things that the banks and the purported governments have done, such as everything that you've pretty much done in your life, there's been a bond place on you. And they are making millions, if not billions of dollars off your value. You have no access to it. They lie to you continuously and tell you that you don't have any value. But within the system, they're trading your value every minute of every day. Yeah. So just, just to interject for a second, oh, just Lisa, um, they hid the, the, the whole concept that you are the value behind the, this straw man, the corporation version of you that they created and through the account that they created in that name. And like you just used the house analogy, they just went in and stole it through paper because they haven't inhabited you they haven't possessed you as nope. such they've just possessed and stolen the paper version of you well yeah i mean and that's what the that's what the one people's public trust gave back right on july 25th of 2000 and uh 2012 last year um everything that was on a commercial registry everything operates under a commercial registry everything is commercial um everything everything from everything. from the, the people were put under commercial the purported courts purported uh, the corporations operating under the guise of governments were all corporate everything is corporate and so everything to your religions your schools your hospitals and um actually a number of hospitals have their own banks a lot of uh universities are heavy uh, into the financial area as well, finance companies. Um, here's what I can tell you, is that the approach that we took, whether it was the public trust, uh, it was, there were many before us, um, but the ones that actually went in to close everything, all the purported systems down, so that what is could actually operate, absent limit, was Caleb uh, Skinner, Randall Hollis, uh, excuse me, Hollis Randall Hillner, and then myself, and through the Heather and Tucci Giraffe, Heather and Tucci Giraffe, and through our various backgrounds and experiences, like Caleb's, you know, he's he's got a successful company that's a code, does a lot of code writing, program writing, he works um, in a lot of different areas because that's also another sector that has no borders. Um, and then Randall was around, Randall's older than Caleb and I, so he was around during many different movements and has been in the bank trade and finance um, in some fashion or form. And so with all of that basic knowledge, we were able to go in, and mine was legal, law, um, bank trade and finance, and uh, contracts, which everything is a contract. Every event in your life is a contract. 
whether you know it or not, they get basically a contract or an agreement. Um, you are the way that the system, as Dee had said, is basically they take your eternal essence from birth because your body is just your vehicle that your eternal essence operates through. And what it operates is actually energy. And energy is the value system. Paper and gold, oil, silver, whatever, <clears throat> Federal Reserve bills, any currency you can name, is just a representation right. of true value. Because the true value is people. Right, exactly. And so what we our approach that we took was, number one, just going to get done the parts that instead of sitting there and trying to teach everyone how to go do it, we realized it, it could be done by one because it's all the same facts, the same scenario, um, the same system. And once you know the template, uh, they all are uniform. And so that was all closed down. And essentially, all this corporate um, or representations were canceled for cause. Deceptive acts and practices and fraud. And there was a certain way that we did that. And no, we did not use the lean mechanism. Uh, we actually went in and did a different way. It's all in the paperwork. And we can go over that later. It's There's been a number of interviews on that. So I'll leave that uh, to the side for now. And essentially what everyone is wanting to know at this moment is they have all this value in them. Nothing's ever been taken from them, um, but it has been, con it's been taken by title, by paper by control. and process and through management. If you look at where they've invested all of their time, their money, their efforts, their energy, it's in controlling the population, the public. Through media, religion. Government, schools, schools hospital. hospitals, prisons, and they put bonds on you in pretty much every single one of those institutions. Well, the way that they go in and from the moment that the body is created, because that's actually the notice of eternal essence, in body. People say embodiments. I say in body, embodiment. And that's when the eternal essence, the soul, whatever you would like to call it, goes in. And really it's about that particular soul or eternal essence being able to use the energy and manifest and create. And that is the value. Um, so what they do is they go in and basically the birth certificate uh, is one example where they go in and they take over the body. And here you think you're just registering yourself so people know that you actually are a human being, a live body. And that's all sent off to the World Bank and IMF. Um, and from there, everything goes in, everything you do, you do actually under, uh, you're a corporation operating under the guise of human. And then your account at the central banks is charged basically for everything. And all the systems, that's where all the courts, purported courts, send all their paperwork is up to the central banks. And they get credits uh, for every every transaction and contract that they do every person who goes to jail <laughs> it's yep. by consent you no one goes to jail without their consent this is the reason so everything... why... Go on, oh, sorry this is the reason why when if you ever were pulled over by a traffic cop and they wanted to give you a ticket they'll almost or quite often will threaten you uh, with with arrest if you don't sign that ticket they really, really, at least in this country. Yeah. The and they, says, you, need, you need to sign this ticket. Well, and that's and the, that's fine, Bob. You know, here's the thing. There's a lot of contracts that people aren't made aware of. And so a contract is where you know the material facts. There's certain elements to a contract in order to have a binding contract. And then there's agreements, which legally and factually, conceptually, are different. So agreements, you don't... You don't have to disclose everything. If you can get their consent and, and it's an unknowing, unwilling and unintentional consent, it's still an agreement. And it's really about asking the right questions. So the best thing to do is if someone comes up to you, Bob, with a contract that has a signature that says Bob Wright, but you know you didn't sign it and you didn't you don't even know this person, what would you say to them? Well, if they tried to enforce it? You'd say, show me the damn signature. Yeah. Well, yeah, so that's not me. right. And I didn't sign that, whatever it may be. So here's the thing. If 
anyone makes you sign anything, just your signature is whatever you want to make of it. Okay, it could be an X, it could be a thumbprint, it could be a squiggly, it could be actually Bob Wright. Okay, for me, what I do is in in uh, law, okay, and then in legal systems because there's a difference between law and legal systems. <laughs> Big difference. All right. So what happens is is when I go to sign something, my my signature because your signature is anything you intend to represent you. My signature is without prejudice, Heather and Tucci Giraffe. And I do that because I don't know what contracts or agreements, what kind of dealings have been done. So when I sign something, I'm just signing, yeah, sure, you need this piece of paper? Okay, but I'm doing it without prejudice, which means I can't be harmed, damaged, or prejudiced, or held to a binding contract that I have never seen and don't know all the facts to. That's what without prejudice means. So I've had, uh, my husband, in fact, was in a situation where just out of the blue, all these cops show up and he's in Spain. And Spain happens to not think that it's part of the European Union. It's it's Spain. It's España. At, at least in that town, anyways. <laughs> in that town. And so, you know, they were like, you have to sign this. Same kind of attitude that, Bob, you were just illuminating to with uh, the... Uh, traffic police. Traffic police. You know, they were like, you have to sign this. You have to sign this. And they were getting really aggressive, really pushy. My husband's not small. He's 6'4". And no, he's not Ethiopian. He's actually Moroccan. <laughs> and he was like, I will sign anything you t put in front of me. And then when he went to go sign, he signed without prejudice and his name. And they flipped out. <laughs> and all the way from the cops to the lawyers to the magistrates to the judges were flipping out that he signed without prejudice and he was very uh, respectful and said no problem you put anything before me i'll go ahead and sign it but that's what he signed with and they were all flustered and frustrated but there was nothing they could do and out Did of all the google it and he, he told, told them, them to google, google yeah because he kept saying he you know wanted to talk to his embassy and they were like you can't you have no rights you're not Spanish. And he was like, you are part of the European Union, right? Because I am Italian. I am part of the European Union. He goes, we're not. We are España. <laughs> and so they told him to Google things. And so when they told him, what's this without prejudice? And he was like, Google it. <laughs> so, yeah, it was quite an interesting story. But um, here's the point. The point is you are the value. That's what being, when we talk about being and doing, which is a lot of, you know, it's just really simple, really basic. I use those words be and do because those are simple. You be who you be. I just want to backtrack for a second because you said you were talking about the accounts mm -hmm. and how everything you do, they just take out of those accounts. So when we say prepaid, sorry, prepaid, pre-approved, and pre-authorized, uh -huh. essentially that is uh, it's a correct, accurate statement in that everything we choose to do everything we yep. desire to do everything we need is already prepaid and pre-approved and yep. pre-authorized right well that's why it's so important the be and the do that's just a very simple statement the point is if you be and do especially after what the op the what was referred to as the oppt the people's trust went in and returned everything to everyone anytime you be and do it is now yours there's no corporate or hidden uh, representation that they can actually charge to because you you're full custodian you're the sole custodian of your body yeah. which is your vehicle and your being which is your eternal essence and that is where the value is okay so now let's let's get into the meat of what everyone wants to talk about now how do we as beings mm -hmm. access our value okay so let's go, let's get right into it. Okay. So first off, the value has always been in you. It's just been a matter of what hasn't been told, what hasn't been transparent is number one, what the value is. And now that you all know where the value is, um, and it lawfully and legally has been returned is that you've always been able to access it. So right now it's a matter of people you can either give them a fish for a day or you can teach them how to fish. And really this is just reminding you how to fish because everything that's about to be said has always been. 
which is why they really don't want people to be focused on knowing themselves or going within and using their tools of resonance. They need you distracted so you don't think about this stuff. And so when you go in to access your value, what is very important is to know this. The tools that are in the quote unquote financial system are the tools, they're representations. They're usually a written or a physical representation of the energetics. Okay, so the financial system, as far as the tools and the mechanisms are beautiful. And, and they are very correct because they needed to use the correct tools in order to transfer and use. The problem was they commandeered and stole things that weren't theirs. And when I say they, um, you know, I'm not talking about the purported, uh, the, the corporations operating under the guise of government. Okay, I'm talking about those who actually use those tools in order to commandeer. Normally people know them as the 13 families. And even within the 13 families, there are many that were trying and, and have um, assisted in making sure this all comes out. So I'd really like to point that out. And there are a lot of people within those systems, agents and beneficiaries that also have been working to make sure all this comes out. So the tools. Typically people are very familiar with the bond. Okay, a check. You know, the checks that you write to your grocery or that you write for your gas or that you write for the school or your rent or rent or whatever. Checks are a bond. It's actually a bill of exchange. Okay. And I don't like the word bond because bond is bondage. Yep. Okay. In the value system, what they did was they took a part of the value system, put it into a vacuum. And it happens in when it's in the value system and it's whole, it actually is the enforcement and accountability, self-accountability feature of the value system. When you separate it, it ends up creating a debt system, which is what people today know as the financial system. So it looks like there's limited resources. It looks like there's not enough. Um, and it's... And that each person has no value. And each person is not the value. They actually have to borrow the value. Okay. Um, that's a huge part. And so what I have focused on with Caleb uh, and Randall throughout this entire time was not to just give a fish. And if something happens to the person teaching how to get a fish, everyone's kind of screwed. So really it's about everyone knowing all the data so that they can be creative since it is their value, it is their body, their vehicle that they're doing this. And I love all the DNA conversations um, and the Supreme Court in the US went in and dealt with this too. DNA is just a part of your vehicle, right? It's a part of your body. And GW Hardin brought up the, it's not just DNA, you hear RNA, you hear all these acronyms, um, junk DNA, that's going to be an interesting revelation here very, very sh uh, shortly <laughs> um, of what that actually all is. But what I can say is this, the tools are still the same as far as accessing, but I don't like the word bond it is an instrument. Okay. Like the public trust, when we went in to test the different mechanisms on how to do, you know, return everything to everyone, there was an acceptance performance bond and that's a bondage, right? It's a, it's, a voluntary commercial indenture. You're agreeing to be a commercial servant for whatever period of time, for whatever the term and contract, uh, term and conditions are. So instead, what I would like to do, and this is what I've been working on for release for today, which will be released today, is giving everyone the data of the value system, the whole, and you'll be able to recognize the part that was the financial system. And I'm actually breaking it down so you can see how they actually made physical representations of the energetics and didn't tell you about the energetics and the whole value system. And then also the tools and the instruments, you'll see um, how value actually works, which is value for value. And you'll also be able to see the different tools because if you know what, what the actual value system is, you know how the value for value works, like uh, currencies, for instance, as an example, They'll say, oh, it's, uh, for instance, in Morocco, it's something like eight and a half dirham per dollar. 
or 8.2 dirham per euro, right? That's a value exchange. Well, value for value is one to one unit. Doesn't matter what the units are because they're all representations of energy. So everything's actually standard across the board. I don't care what representation one chooses to use as long as it's mutually acceptable. So it doesn't matter if there are these current systems. What I would like to do is show you the bond that we actually put together for the slavery system actually to use within it because at the time it was still standing it was still standing and those that choose that they want to you know let other people take their value that's the tool they can actually go in and use and you can see the evolution up to where we where we are now where it's uh, basically i which is the eternal essence everyone is eternal essence and everyone controls their value and their body and then you can see the evolution of how that bond really is just an instrument it's a transmitting utility or a transmitting vehicle of the energy of the value that you're going to transfer now it could be in the form of a federal reserve note it could be the form of a yen a swiss franc it could be in the form silver gold right it could be in the form of a service um Value comes in many, many different forms. It could just be a straight energetic exchange as well, right? Energy. Um, and that way people can make an informed choice of how they want to operate their value, operate their vehicles, and actually create and manifest and co-create and co-manifest. So that was the approach. And I just want to make sure everyone knew it was about giving them the, the knowledge, the, the actual information, because in bank trade and finance, knowledge is the currency. The paper and the coins and the natural resources are not. Okay. Those are just the, the booty, if you will, from the knowledge. Okay. And so that's what the documents will be. And then once you know the value system, you know what kind of documents you need to have in place. If you think about it, when you go to do a credit card application, for instance, that's a declaration. And it says, I declare that the uh, foregoing is true, correct, true and correct. Okay, so the application is actually the underwriting for a plastic, a piece of plastic that shows up at your door. And then the acceptance of the contract or the agreement, really, because they don't tell you all the material facts, so it's actually an agreement, is you using that piece of plastic. And you're bound every time you use that piece of plastic. So you have multiple contracts going on every time that you use that piece of plastic. Your signature is actually the signature on the contract. Okay, so... What I wanted to make sure was that everyone have the basic tools and really it is just declarations. And then it's also deposits. If there's two representations of eternal essence, which they've been using, which is business and bank. Every embodiment is their own bank. And the way the value system works, it's not just planetary, it's universal. Actually, everyone has experience with just the, um, planetary. And then what happens is BIS was mainly, was the main one, um, that would actually take things universal. And so a lot of information is going to be coming out about that as well. So we have Caleb who went in and basically created the programming and the coding so that tools that we use today that, have, that we know as harvesting tools, uh, such as Skype, um, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook MySpace, mm -hmm. Um, all of these give you free accounts, but what people don't know is all your data is being sold. So they're making quite a bit of money on your data. Even though you have a free account, you're using all this, they're selling it over. It's like your medical records. When you go in and you are with the doctor, they basically, if you read the actual paperwork, you'll see where you give them permission to sell your medical records, sell your data, sell your information. And they make quite a bit of money to get a lot of stipends from corporations, from big pharma, big pharma. Um, and all that data is yours. So Caleb went in and he calls it the VEX protocols. One is you own your own data. Two is if your data is out in the public, it's always encrypted. And three is that if it's not in your control, then there's an accommodation agreement or contract in place, meaning you give them terms and conditions of how they can use your data. So really you now have just made, took all those deceptive acts and practices, which make you revenue streams you don't know about off of you and your data and your value. And they're now yours. 
and you get to choose yeah. who you want to share your information. If you want those revenue streams, you give your revenue streams. But the point was, was taking that, giving you the key to your own account, which usually, you know, those harvesting tools I just spoke of, keep them. And that way they can give the information. And usually corporations operating under the guise of governments would come in and even corporations, straight corporations would come in and do warrants for your information on your cell phone server uh, carrier your cell phone provider, your internet provider. Um, they go in and they serve these warrants and you have no idea that they've gone in and actually asked for your data and your information. And so it was funny because there was that big um, disclosure about NSA using all of those particular harvesting tools that I've named um, and going and getting your data. Well, Project 13, which is what Caleb created, uh, was a way for them to do it right. Instead of going to a place where there's possibly millions of accounts and, and embodiments sitting there and just grabbing up, you know, batches or bulk, they actually now have to go to each person and let them know, hey, I want your data. And then you sit and you're responsible for going in and being competent. And negotiating and, the price. <laughs> yeah, negotiating the price or saying, you know, what's this for? You know, just asking the questions. And so I loved the concept of everyone being in charge of their own value. You are your own bank. You run your own body, your own business, um, and you need to be responsible for it. So you need the systems to be able to do that. So it was really important to also have the, the law be what it is. And that's why that last uh, UCC filing, which reconciled all of the commercial registries so that they no longer exist, they may um, still have them up and operating, yet at the same time, nothing that goes in there is valid at this point. It hasn't been for a while. And so, so nothing that goes in there is harvestable? No. 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 Um, it's the same as um, when you write without prejudice and my name, that's my signature, and just because they asked me to sign the document doesn't mean I'm a party to their hidden contracts. Okay, unless it is discoverable and unless yep. it's actually disclosed to you, how can you be a party to it? So even if they still are filing things, um, if they are to about you, Lisa, for instance, you're not held accountable for it. You're not held responsible for it because they're not disclosing it to you and you're not signing on it. Henceforth, it's not a contract. Right. Okay, so... These tools, what I wanted to do and what I've done is actually disclose the value system, how it actually works, and then also show you how they took a part of it and made it what is the past financial system so that you know the difference. And you can make an informed choice because if you still want to operate in that way, great. They don't have anything to pay you with um, at this point unless they bring, you know, continue the, a Ponzi scheme and bring others in and then use their value to pay you so it looks like they actually have something. Um, or you, you're going to have that bond, for instance, that tool, that main operating tool. Call it a template? Well, it's, it was the template that we used that we were going to use prior to taking everything to I. Even before fathoming, you know, and going following following the trail back to I, back to prime, back to zero point. And so I would like everyone to see that because I want everyone, it's about absolute data, not one piece missing. They need to see the difference. If they want to work in a compartmentalized um, financial system that is a debt-driven system, or if they want to work in the value system, which is the absolute energetics, and they actually now can work universal at that point, not just planetary, but universal. Um, and then how see the tools and how they actually work, how they create their bank, how they create their um, business, and then how they actually do the transactions and transfer the energies. Those documents are what will be released tonight along with the value system data. And then you can go in, whether it's Project 13, for instance, um, that you choose to actually do your banking and your business transactions where you actually own your own key to your own account, 
which Caleb's, I think it's an ASA or some kind of a key where the data goes on a server for three days so that people can actually receive it. And then he's actually making it so that it's an RSA key, which means nobody sees it at any moment, just the people you send it to, who you choose. Okay. And it's encrypted with a huge mega encryption process. Right. right. And so um, you can use Project 13, but I also want to make sure that it's not limited. Everyone should be able to play. And you should be able to make your own choice of who you want to play with. Yep. So if you want to walk into a bank or you want to walk into any purported government uh, op corporation operating under the guise of government, I should say, um, or corporation, you should be able to know how it all works so that you can walk in knowingly, willingly, intentionally and say, I would like to play with you under these terms and conditions and then negotiate from there if you choose or just start to play but have the same tools so they're all uniform so you can walk into a bank and let's say you do a declaration of uh, deposit which is just basically a declaration of value which was all um, OPPT the tool went in and recovered basically or set a limit set an amount I should say at 10 billion it was 5 billion for every embodiment and then 5 billion extra for anyone who declares their damage by the systems and yet that's only a fraction of what they actually took but that was enough to go in and be able to stop the systems from flowing illegally and unlawfully and allowing everyone the chance to breathe and get caught up with what the heck has been going on so there is that to start with but there's actually more and if that's what you choose then basically you just make a declaration of what it is and then they I, would have to rebut it. Yeah. I, John Doe, um, <laughs> would like to deposit in your bank yeah. $1 million of my value. Well, not $1 million, but $1 but million. One units. million units, sorry. Because I the dollar is the yen, any yeah. kind of those current, what they call current funds. And I love the word current because it's really about energy, right? Current funds. And exactly. so if you go in, I want to make sure that people have the choice of where they, what systems they want to use. So the tools need to be uniform across the board. And when you use the value system, they are. Even in the financial system, those tools are the same tools. It's just that you're declaring and they have to rebut it. So let's, let's talk practicalities just for a second. Mm -hmm. and, Cause you know, that's what I do. Um... <laughs> practicalities, <laughs> nice wording. <laughs> Nice morning. Uh -huh. um, I've been warned, so I know. <laughs> um, so, the, so the education in terms of how the system works and where the value is, that's that's here now and, and it's more is coming. Mm -hmm. The uniform paperwork. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for, for myself, what I see is certainly the people who have been following this whole process for the last six months are mm. uh, very, very excited about the directly into the IUV exchange. Right. Exactly. Or in change, whatever, whatever we're calling it now. In change. And in change. In the, change. The IUV in change. But there is, uh, that's, that's an education process that is going to start now as well. Yeah. I mean, getting everybody, getting the word out, getting, everyone from manufacturers and distributors and retailers and all of these other people to understand that there is a what what can be seen as a, a new currency in the system um, and jumping on board with that so the, the interim step here is very likely to be people going to the banks with this with these pieces of paper and offering to credit offering to deposit some of their units of value into that bank minimal amounts i would think hopefully at first um yes yes because, please <laughs> <laughs> um, just enough to you know basically see you between here and you know the iuv being up and running completely but um what's so practical practically what is the step you walk in you make that offer and what, give them 72 hours to rebut well, let, how about I do this, Lisa? How about I actually walk it through as I would do it, as I'm going to do it? Excellent. Absolutely. That great. I can talk about. Okay? I give the talking sticks to Heather. <laughs> what We're you... losing you. We're losing you. Uh-oh. 
How's that? Are you, can you hear us better? Hello? Please don't tell yeah, me. Yeah, back. Okay, good. Phew. Okay. So, essentially, I, I'm going to use Project 13 because what most people don't know yet is Project 13 is actually the first that I know of entity or representation that's sitting in I in, in the governing law. Um, so, Caleb, the companies that he actually is running Project 13 through are representations of him. And so those are also in I. And that's what people would usually refer to as a corporation. So for instance, I'm going to give you an example of how I would do my IUV in change on Project 13, as well as my IUV in change with tools of the former systems. Okay. So on Project 13, for instance, I go in and I create an account uh, with Project 13. And then what I do is, is I do a declaration of representation saying I'm creating uh, whatever representation name you want to use. I can either use Heather and Tucci Giraffe. I can use um, BBC, <laughs> BBC Corporation. I can use whatever it is as long as I declare what it is. And I put that declaration of representation so everyone knows it's there, it's established, and I'm responsible for it. I'm responsible for with my full personal liability and responsibility for anything and everything that particular representation representation does because it's really just me doing. And that way I can communicate with any of the old tools that still may be up and running and still haven't made that switch so it's a bridge. Okay. Okay. So then I would also do a declaration of representation for a bank. I can call it whatever I want. Again, Heather and Tucci Giraffe, you know, you know, bank is whatever. <laughs> and uh, but I do a declaration of representation so everyone knows that that is a representation of me. I'm fully responsible and liable for anything and everything that bank does because it is me. In full transparency. In full transparency, and I post that on my Project Thirteen as well. And then what I do is I go in and for each of those, because you got to have some value in there to actually do, right? Mm -hmm. Because just as you have value in you and your body's the vehicle, well, your bank and your, your representations, which we've discussed as a bank and a, and a business, are just representations of you. So you need to deposit some value in there. So you do a de declaration uh, of deposit, a value deposit. And then you choose whatever some, what, whatever amount of value you want. Now this is all energetics, okay? But these documents are the written representation of those energetics and it's what we call in bank trade and finance, the underwriting. And it's very similar to when you go in, uh, same way you actually create a brick and uh, a mortar and brick uh, bank. You first establish it, you go in and incorporated it in corp, which is in body. Yes. And then you go in and you have to put value or what what they call capital into that bank, right? Supposedly. And then right. from there, you can have customers. You can open your door and then you ask them to please bring their value to your bank. Well, in this particular instance, you are the value. Anything that you do in the value system, you draw energetic units behind everything that you do, depending, and it's in various amounts. It's value for value, okay? So what happens is I just declare what value. Now for those that are not too keen or too comfortable or into the energetics of it yet, the OPBT went in and did that 5 billion and that 5 billion. So really out of that 10 in gold and silver, because gold and silver actually are just representations, the gold and more will be disclosed about this coming up in various different ways. But gold is actually the representation of the eternal essence or what people, some people call the soul. And silver is actually the representation, the physical representation of the body, the vehicle. And more will be said about that. Yeah, more details will be given on that very soon. And so everything that 5 billion and that 5 billion was reserved in gold and silver or not reserved, but returned in gold and silver. Cause that's what they all agreed to, uh, would be payments for debt. Debt would be paid in gold and silver. And one of the most famous places to find that was the uh, purported United States of America, Constitution of the United States of America. 
And then all the central banks, when they cut their currencies, they have actual um, dollars sent over by the Federal Reserve. That they have FRNs, Federal Reserve notes, sent over to the Federal Reserve. They deposit into their central banks, and they can cut as much currency for as many Federal Reserve notes as they have. So they all agree to that particular debt should be or shall be paid in gold and silver as well. That was the connection, and that was the lineage between. All of the purported uh, or the corporations operating under the guise of government. That's why everyone has the gold and the silver. I want that to be clear. So you can choose. What I would do is I would go in and say, okay, I'm going to make a de declaration of value deposit in my bank that I've done a declaration of representation for. And I would say, okay, in this particular declaration of value deposit, I'm putting in $100 million in gold and silver and that's what's in my bank now I also am subject to audit for any kind of business dealing or dealing that I want to do with anybody else they have to be able to have access to my my records and we have that in the former systems or have that in the former systems already that's what your auditors your your accounting firms your banks would supposedly do was go in and audit your transactions every year and supposedly in the US for instance they had what was called uh, the Eternal Revenue Service and that was supposedly their purpose their purported purpose was to go in and make sure that you pay taxes made sure that you um, your uh, books were clean and everything else and there was actually a number of mechanisms for that your State Department was another one and then you have the international equivalents um, so really the systems themselves were beautifully designed except for the fact that they didn't tell you who the value really was and except that they based that they were commandeering everything that they were yeah. commandeering everything so really the tools themselves it's sort of like people say oh a gun kills well a gun doesn't kill it's the people operating the gun that can kill Right? It's the same thing here. These tools are actually great tools if they are done in transparency. If you add transparency to the system and it become, goes back and is reunited with the value system, those tools actually operate correctly. And you reunite the yin and the yang and it changes the formula or the um, harmony of those particular compartmentalized points and the ones that they don't tell you about. Okay, so I would go into Project 13 and that's how I'd handle it. And then from there, any, any doing I wanted to do through those representations, and mind you, for me right now, those representations are a bridge tool for anything that still appears to be remaining from the former system. Yep. Okay, so that way they can communicate, I can communicate, everyone's happy and we can still get lots done. Yet everything I do is my intentions. As it's, far as what I, who I choose to play with, who I engage with, usually I'll find someone that's like-minded that wants to make things transparent and create beautiful things for the highest good of all. So, and we're going to be doing some serious creating, serious, and we're going to talk about that tomorrow. I or or after after that'll, that'll be on tomorrow's. That'll yeah, be after the, the opposite of before. After opposite. this, yeah, the, the um, um, we we didn't want to get into it right now because we want the focus to be on on what we're discussing at this moment. But this week we will be going seriously talking about creating, doing the doing, example doing, of doing, doing. creating. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, because it's important that if I can't, if I won't use these tools, but I'm telling someone to go use them. That's never been the approach that I've ever done because for me, that would be deceptive in itself. Yep. So I'd rather go and do this and it can be an example, just an example, one example. Okay. Cause so many people are much more creative than I am. And so I would really love to experience their creativity, but I will go in and show and do cause I, I know this, I believe this and my molecular structure will explode if I don't. Uh, go in and actually do this so people can rely upon it as far as this is something she's chosen to do she's standing behind it she's standing within it and that way if there's any problems you'll definitely know won't you yes 
absolutely. <laughs> has been usually the tact we've taken uh, with the OPPT and everything else. So that's how I would do that. And then any transaction that I go to do or play with others, it would be by contract. Here's the express written terms. Now for me, it just depends. Like there's savvy investors or institutional investors in the old systems. And then you have non-institutional investors. Well, that's just a matter of knowledge and database, right? So yep. for me, when I go in to do a contract, depending on the savviness or the commitment of the other person in the energetics, then that depends on how much of a written representation you need of the energetic doing and transfer. And that comes down to a trust issue, uh, what most people would say trust and all of the uh, former systems, which are the financial systems, which was just a part of the value system, was all based on non-trust. And yet it was because there was no transparency. Yeah. However, when there's transparency, it's not even a matter of trust at that point. No, trust because becomes irrelevant. Clear. Everything's it's clear. clear. There is no question. There is no, I'm sorry to say, there's no lawyers arguing in a courtroom about a, the, what the specific word means legally <laughs> in a contract um, because full transparency. It is, everything is laid out clearly in absolute data so there is no questions i hadn't even finished law school yet and the judge i worked for judge seipel loved that man judge seipel uh, asked me what would you like to accomplish i was like i would love that nobody would ever need another lawyer ever again so please help me accomplish my goal <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here yeah exactly so um that's how I would do project 13 with my bank, my representations, which we've, des which I've designated or identified as a bank and a business in order to have that bridge tool between the old tools, why they are closing out, um, or just redefining themselves to what they really are, which is a representation of eternal essence and the, the embodiment. Um, and then I would just do my transactions. And then what happens is all the declarations that I've put on my, my account for project 13 that's the underwriting it's the same as a bill of exchange it's the same as um an insurance contract because if someone needs to collect upon that everything is digital whether you think things are digital or not i can tell you everything in bank trade and finance is digital the written representations or the physical representations that you have they're still accounted for digitally and they actually are uh tracked digitally those are just for your comfort so that you feel that you have some kind of say over, you know, you have some security that you have cash in your pocket or coin in your pocket. And yet they play with that every day, which is what we saw with the Libor scandal. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. one day you have $10 in your pocket and the next it's not worth $10. It's, it's worth, worth 10 cents. 10 cents. Yeah. So um, that's how I would do it. And that's how I am going to do it. And these are actually the documents that I'm talking about. These declarations, the underwriting, which is also the physical asset. And originals would be delivered to whoever you're working with. Now, there is a um, interesting patent too, actually. One was from Bank of America. The other one was from Visa. Uh, Bank of America purportedly in 2011 filed a patent for um, regarding the universal value exchange. Now it wasn't yeah, interesting uh, choice of words. Right. And you know, I was working with Intel at that time very closely in 2011 and yet, and, and there was a period of time when there was like no communication. It was through uh, court smart, which, you know, they would listen through all the different cases as we were in there and everything else. But basically, that patent was never disclosed. So, you know, could it have been backdated? Yes. Could it have existed and I just didn't know about it? Yes. However, it was very interesting that it was the UV exchange. And that's when I changed everything to I-X-C-H-A-N-G-E. And now I'm just, you know, I'm having fun with it, but at the same time, really want things to represent what they actually are, which yep. is in change. Exactly. You know, not M power, but in power. Uh, not embodiment, but embodiment. There's something energetically that just feels it's taken away when you use the EX or the EM. Um, and so really it's a matter of getting creative. And that's what I really 
desire and am manifesting for everyone else is that they can be creative and know that they are safe, know that they are the power and the value to actually be creative. Okay. So all of these documents are what's going to be released tonight. And those actually are the same kind of tools that they use when you go to sign up for a credit card, when you go to sign up for an account at a bank, when you go to sign for a car or a house, these are the same tools. They're all declarations. And the only thing that's different is that you know who the value is, you know where the value is, plus all the underwriting for at least the 5B, 5 billion and 5 billion were done by OPBT. So all of that will be on an account for project 13. Um, since we took the website down, Bob, I think you're echoing. Okay. Hello. Yeah, you were echoing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, thank you, Bob. 50 uh, lashes with a wet noodle for you. A lymph noodle, sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure that um, on Project 13, there's an account for I uh, with all of the former OPBT, um, all the filings that were done, because that's all the underwriting for at least that $5 billion and that $5 billion. Um, so people can actually point to it. We retired OPBT. We reconciled it to the I. And so energetically, we need to take down the website. But it's all sitting there. All that document all documentation is still out there. Uh, but it's in a transition phase as far as me making sure that the tools are up so everyone has them, they can use them without undue influence, okay? And then I want to make sure that all that's mirrored so that you don't have to have an account on Project 13 to access them. That's very important is choice. Yeah. Okay, so now freedom let's... Freedom of choice. Freedom of choice. So now let's move to what I what I am going to do. Um, and I this is going to be fun. I love this part. So you have these former tools, right? And they appear to still be operating. And you can hear me now and believe me later. Um, some actually have access to this information and are already calling. So it's a matter of making sure that they can operate. A certain doing is about to be done between Deutsche, um, which ends up with not such a good situation for HSBC, Wells Fargo, HSBC just took over 51% uh, minimum of ownership of Wells Fargo, Citibank, JP Morgan, and there were a couple others. Um, yeah. And so really it's just all HSBC. And yet on the inside for over the last, uh, since 2009, the insiders have been trying to sell those brand, uh, HSBC branches forever. And then I had been contacted or we, the public trust had been contacted <laughs> 2011, trying to get us to meet with Wells Fargo, HSBC, the Saudis, um, the Pakistani family was involved at Smelters All the Gold, trying to get us to meet and nothing was transparent. So none of the meetings happened. I bring all this up because a lot of disclosure will be coming out about those here very shortly and how basically they plan on taking the same girl and putting a different party dress on her and yet having certain banks fall. Now, here's the thing. If certain tools, if a tool sector falls, all of it has to fall. You can't just say one of them is going to survive sort of like that bad bank situation that they, that the <laughs> wonderful purported U.S. Treasury, our Timothy Geithner supposedly thought of. And he was going to create a bad bank, put all the bad assets in it, and then leave the banks healthy. Right? And so there's a guy that... You know, that's fully transparent. <laughs> and so this all goes into, um, you know, yeah, Basel three, which supposedly Basel three was actually a tool. It's a BIS tool when the corporations were still lawfully and legally. Well, let's just say they were existing purportedly <laughs> lawfully and legally. And yet it just took a matter of one person recognizing they weren't and doing something about it. Um, and so Basel III really is, was a matter of keeping things supposedly in ground because there's nothing that they could actually pull out. It was always being pulled out and then gone, taken off planet. Okay. So for gold, silver, natural resources, everything else. So that was really a way for them to sort of have even more non-transparency. Um, and actually one of the test, uh, testers, the Basel III certified, uh, 
uh, testers, I call him Dr. Death, uh, Esegundo, I'll release some files within the bank trade and finance experiences that I had so people can actually see and have transparency and context, more absolute context to what we're talking about with the value system versus a part of the value system that's been va in a vacuum, okay? And so what happens is, is I would like to really go in and make sure that they aren't putting a different party dress on the same girl and then trying to tell you that it's something totally different. Okay. So what I would do is actually take those same documents that I was talking about on project 13 and I would actually take them into a bank and say, I want to assist you, but we're going to do this transparently and you're going to do it under the terms and conditions that I deem. Okay. In bank trade and finance, it was, known in the upper echelons that you could just take a promissory note, secure it on the commercial registry, take those two documents in, and basically you loan money over to the banks. Now the banks are required to convert that because if they can't convert that, they're insolvent, which means they can't actually be open for business. Yeah. And so in 2010, I got a lot of calls because guys that were actually doing that and were within the system, were within the club, quote unquote, all of a sudden started having a really hard time and couldn't, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't get their stuff monetized anymore or converted really is what it was. And so like in the U S they would issue what's called uh, a 1099 OID, which is original issue discount. So like Heather goes in, does a promissory note, does a secured, uh, a security agreement or not even a security agreement, but a registry, a notice of that value. And the bank would send that up to the federal reserve. The federal reserve would have to account for the federal reserve notes that they would have to print off in order to convert that to federal reserve notes for me. Usually at a one to one, um, but they would do an actual discount. So they'd make money. So basically that 10% we always hear about, um, them getting 10% interest on any money that comes out of the federal, any notes that come out of the federal reserve. Well, that would be your discount. So if I did one for a hundred thousand, then, you know, 10,000, I'd get one for 90, 90,000 would be deposited yeah. in my account. And so it's kind of the same thing here. You go in and you just say, Hey, I'll do this, but it should be value for value. And maybe those will be my terms. You know, give me a hundred thousand, um, I'll, I'll deposit value. So here's my declaration of representation so that you know, these are my representations and it's something that your system can actually communicate with. And then I give them my declaration of uh, value deposit and I say, open me an account and here is the value. So I don't even have to deal with central banks anymore. I don't have to deal with federal reserve notes because it's value for value. But if the bank feels more comfortable, that's fine. They can give me FRNs and yet they still get the promissory note because the central banks and BIS all worked off of energetics anyways. And so they would be able to okay, kind of... we just lost you. We Heather, just lost I'm going to ask you to read. Heather, I'm Are you ask there? You to Can you guys hear last... us? Can you hear me? Yeah, repeat that last statement. Okay. So I don't even know where that jumped off. Okay, so I would go into the bank and I would say, here's my declaration of uh, representation. Here's my declaration of value deposit, what I'm willing to deposit into your bank. And here's all the underwriting. So I would, I'd probably just use the OPPT underwriting for the 5 billion and the 5 billion until that was either gone or I don't, I don't uh, plan on not doing anything. So I'm going to actually increase that value. Um, however, I can go in and deposit whatever I want in there. Say, open me an account. Here's my underwriting. Here's my value. They don't even have to go to the... Federal Reserve or any purported central bank because it is the actual value. But they, if they feel more comfortable converting it, and I know the Federal Reserve notes are empty, so what I'm willing to do is just say, yep, I will take your funny money, I will take the paper, and I'll use it as a tool. But I know it's my value that's in that tool. So I will go ahead and underwrite that tool, but I get the use of it, and I depend, I determine the use that I'm going to use it for. And they have no say over how I'm going to use it, yet I am responsible for how I use it because if I damage anyone, I'm going to end up paying someone in whatever uh, tool that I have that's demanded by the damaged party. I am responsible for that. Okay, so 
here we have a very different scenario with the value system versus the financial system, yet the financial system is actually within the value system. It's just harmonized okay. when it's in Here's this whole. Here's a question. Here's a question that, that I know is going to come up. Mm -hmm. What if the bank chooses not to play with you? Huh? We're going to find that out, <laughs> won't we? Here's the thing, and I, I've discussed this several times, especially over the last two weeks. Let's we we know that we have an estimate at this point, and I'm lowballing this. There's an estimated eighteen to twenty million people who know about the OPPT filings right now. Now let's just say that if even one million people take these and run with this, if even 200,000 people in the USA all walk in tomorrow to their bank and put this down on the counter and say, hi, I'd like to deposit some of my value, please and thank you. What do you think is going to happen? Even better yet, what if everyone gets together and they all decide, hey, let's all go to such and such a bank. And such and such a bank has, in a 12-hour period, like I say, 200,000 people all show up saying, guess what? We're going to deposit our value. All it takes is one bank to play. Because as soon as someone what? says, as soon as Lisa goes in and says, I went into the mom and pop bank here and they did it. Every single person on this planet is going to be flying into her hometown, <laughs> Australia, going, ha, 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 we want to play too. Well, here's the awesome thing. When you go in and they say no, they just prove that they are insolvent. Yeah. Because everything you're presenting to them are actually things that are in their system, and that's what their system ran on. So when they reject it and they say, oh, no, this isn't yeah. valid, this isn't this or that, they actually deem their own paper and their own system invalid because it's the same paper and it's the same stuff that you're doing. From the, so the former you system. Demand a rebuttal in yeah, response, exactly. In, yep. in written form. Yep. So if they can't rebut it, guess what? Well, it doesn't matter if they reject it or they don't. Either way, it's screwed. Okay. Because they've just invalidated all their own paper. So they're watching this very carefully. So let's say you take the courtesy notice tool that had gone out um, that Chris yep. Hales, you know, talks about all the time. Well, here's what I, and Ken and Scott Bartle, I love them so much. They went in and created this tool because Scott's gone through a lot of these experiences, right? And this is the tool that they came up with. What I loved about the courtesy notice, and before that, the OPBT at one point had used, um, had played around with what's called the pledge. So it's always kind of the same thing. And then I think Chris Hales talked about a bond in the nose, okay? I'm not, I'm not hip on bonds. It's just bondage for me. It's just, they forgot the AGE, right? And so for me, the courtesy notices were an excellent tool to go in and on one side, show the former systems, how awake the people were becoming. And I can tell you out of, I mean, all the countries were getting, well, not countries, the corporations operating under the guise of, corp of uh, governments were freaking out. Now they weren't going to show you that, but it started to come out and all of a sudden collection agencies, purported collection agencies knew about uh, the courtesy notices. People started to report the different kind of experiences and reactions that they were getting. Um, it created a huge tidal wave because all of a sudden what was beautiful about it was it showed them how many people were not just awake, but they were being and doing. And because of the OPBT mm -hmm. filings, which even if people don't understand what happened, the point was... The systems did. And when yep. you be and do, they can't be and do. They, they can't steal your being and doing. And then on the flip side, it was a great tool because it actually helped the people exercise their being and their doing muscles. Yep. It was an excellent exercise in moving forward and taking charge and being accountable. Right. So now at this point, what's beautiful is that I, I never did a courtesy notice. I will say that right now. I never did a courtesy notice. I did, um, during the investigations, toy around, play with, and and actually experience certain mechanisms that were similar to it. And really, it was just a notice. 
Um, but the stuff that's in the notice, all the compartmentalized points I had, had gone into experience. And so that's why I could recognize the tool Chris or, uh, Scott and Ken Bartle had put together. And I was really interested to watch how it actually went. And I did go over it and make sure that at least the OPPT filings were in there so that, um, it wasn't just fluff they were bringing in. Um, it was actually a beautiful mechanism. And so the thing is though, is when it's time, when you decide what you really want, um, to accomplish, the tools may change. They may not serve after a certain point, or they may evolve into something else. Yep. For me, the courtesy notice was great to watch you guys exercise and watch the systems actually have notice of how many people were waking up around the world. Australia was, was um, purportedly the last report from the Intel guys was that Australia was freaking them out the most at that point. <laughs> Australians are rocking it, I'm telling you. Well, you guys had so many movements, quote unquote, and that's what I never, never resonated with the fact that OPT was ever a movement. I only saw it as a tool. And yet I think that the movement is the energy. Well, yes. I'll call it a movement because it flushed out a whole lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> all righty then so um here's the here's what i would like to say is that when for me this isn't about destroying things this is about building and this is about repurposing so what i would like to do is i know certain plans which is to basically have hsbc, HSBC be a sacrificial lamb and with that because of the mergers that recently took place and the takeovers is you have a lot of banks in there, yet Deutsche Bank is supposedly the golden child, which is, you know, all the Austrian families and everything else. Um, and they have Clearwire, which is basically like Euro, uh, Euro um, is it Euroclear? Euroclear, uh, which is like a clearing house, a digital clearing house, and Swift. And basically Clearwire was Deutsche Bank, uh, ABN Amro, I think, or Deutsche Bank and someone else. And that's their in-house. So they don't even tell you that it's actually them. You have to do some digging to be able to find that out. So they have their hands in every single part of it, which means they can control the distribution. And if one bank is going to fall, legally and lawfully, all of them should fall. And what I'd like to do is you have such great people that have a lot of experience in that sector, just like accounting, law, education, medical, just because someone's in a field that may have not been operating transparently doesn't mean the actual people within it are all bad or all have bad intent. Okay. So what I would like to do is be able to go in and say, yep, I would love to have your expertise, your experience. I'm willing to pay you a service fee and I'm actually willing to go in and venture with you. Let's go in and make some money. Let's go in and create. I don't even need to have them just act as a custodian because why I am the custodian of my value, but I would like to have some people to go play with. So if they're willing to play, I will go ahead and make sure that they have value in their bank, but they're going to do things transparently and we're going to do it together so that I know every step that's being taken and they can, they can grow and they can actually heal all the uh, other intent that's been operating there. So there you go, Gulliver. There's your offer on the table. So you're suggesting at this point that everybody who chooses to go down this path by downloading this document tomorrow and visiting a bank visits HSBC. Oh, well, no, no, no. I told you what I was going to go do is, you know, I'm personally, I'm going to go and HSBC and I have not always had the best relationship. You can, <laughs> you can see um, in the paradigm report where HSBC and there's investigations that I didn't put into paradigm report, which were Citibank, Pandit, uh, Pandit and the black ops accounts, uh, as well with the uh, Villarreal Marcos things that were stolen by Ruben. And then you have Wells Fargo, which was under the guise of Macarizzo, which was in Panama, a Panama shell company. And that's Knights of Malta. Uh, and all of that. And so that went all the way up to the directors. They brought in Switzerland. I didn't put those in because they were still pending at the time. And yet here I have Wells Fargo now that is basically HSBC, um, operating by the families. The old man's taking basically all the, um, banks in and then basically going to let them die, which was part of the ferreting out plan, you know, the shaking it out like Swiss Indo is just a tool to ferret out all those with certain agendas. 
the old man's, you know, a lot of the elders, um, a lot of people have been working on making sure this all ends. The experiment is ended and the interrupted purpose proceeds again. So I want to go in and I would like to have some fun. Those that want to have fun, great. I know that HSBC and I have not had the best relationship. I have no hard feelings with the maneuvers that they took, especially against my family. <laughs> uh, although breaking down the door with 10 armed men was a little Excessive. unnecessary with Loey, who was on chemo at the time and alone at home, very sick. Um, so Somewhere what I would like, huh? Somewhat over the top. Just a bit. It, yeah, it was, you know, and then you had the whole Seattle PD and the test site for, you know, militarizing your police department. It just, it wasn't a good thing. So what I would like to do is go in and clear the air and just say, and transparently, so everyone can see what it is I'm going to do. There's no questions, you know, um, they can see. And, and when I say there's no questions, I mean, I give the data and do the doing transparently. Uh, for instance, my Project 13 key will be made public. It'll just be made public so everyone can see and I stand behind and people know that whatever I post on there, I stand behind. I don't want, I want everyone to be able to see and watch, you know, at that point. So what I would like to do is go in and say, HSBC, here we go. I know that it's a sacrificial lamb, but at the same time, it is not um, acceptable for me to have this pick and choose and put a different dress on the same girl. Now the ferreting out tools have been awesome. Excellent. And yes, that was a part of the absolute plan was used to have the banks basically consolidate and then just, you know, have it ferret out who was doing what, what was that? Madam Wu was supposed to be the head of Wells Fargo. And then that got taken off the table. The Real minute, quick. The minute that we started talking about Madam Wu and being the head of Wells Fargo, um, <laughs> So what I would like to do is just go in and say, let's go play. Let's just be creative. Let's be imaginative. And I'm willing to go ahead and repurpose things. And if things don't choose to be repurposed, that's okay too. Cause I'm just going to stand by their side as they walk out, as they cease to exist by their own choice. But at the same time, for me, this is what I know for me within is that every perceived role played a part in making sure we got here. So for me, there is no bad or good. There is no evil uh, or holy. There is, there is just what is, which is eternal essence, having a simultaneous experience through many embodiments. There's no, you know, for me, there are perceived galactics, perceived angelic realms. And yet for me, it's all one density. So these are just what I know for me within. So I'm going to act accordingly. Why would I go in and try to destroy anything? I just want to make sure it's all transparent and yep. that it is, everyone has access to the same transparency. Yep. And then everyone can have fun as they choose. So that's what I'm going to be doing with Project 13. All of these um, instruments, I'll call them instruments or transmitting utilities or vehicles, written representations of who I am and what I do. And anyone who wants to play the same or we can figure out a, a way that we can mutually play together, then great. I'm all for it. Well, you know, so it, would time... to me, it, it would seem to me that the banks, being that they have their ass in a corner right now. <laughs> and on fire. Um, <laughs> it seems to me that the, the banks should be, should be thrilled at the opportunity to play. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people have asked me all this whole time about enforcement, right? And with the value system being disclosed today, they'll be able to see in what I call enforcement, and it's about the energetics. So really, all the banks have not, they don't say boo without family approval, because there's only supposedly 13 families, but there's the guy or the energies, the embodiments behind them that actually manage them. So really, your families end up being the equivalent in bank trade and finance of a broker, right? Or an agent. So what I really strive to do was to make sure that everything was transparent so that all the perceived roles were seen for what they were roles. Yep. Yeah. You know, we're either all one and I do, and I say, and I think one, or I'm just full of, excuse my language, bullshit. 
So I'm not there. I am there for all the perceived roles. I love playing with um, his D is, and, and then all you guys found out when you came to Morocco, the divines, I don't care if it's uh, divines. And as I defined a divine, it's someone who sees himself as divine and requires something less than to support that role. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. so I don't care who comes before me. And I'm so willing to play, but it's going to be done transparently. And the results have always been wonderful and had a great experience, at least on my end. Didn't, I guess it wasn't so fun for the others, but, you know, <laughs> I had a great time and I love each and every one of them, no matter what the perceived role is. So I'm, I'm going to go and have some fun. Anyone who wants to have fun, let's do it, but let's do it transparently. I'll make sure that everyone has access to at least the values, the value system and the tools. And at least the stuff that I know. And there's a lot of stuff out there that other people know that they're going to be bringing out as well. Why? Because you guys are willing to be and do. And you've already shown them that. That's what this whole December 25th onwards has been. You've been showing them, giving them notice that you guys are being and doing. And it's not the uh, old adage that the families would use or that agents would use. You know, the people are stupid. The people are irresponsible. I have seen such beautiful responsibility, such beautiful intelligence, both what people would call spiritually and intellectually. It's just, it's gorgeous. I've had such the best time and I really thank everyone with my eternal energy, my eternal love, peace, gratitude. I've had the best time and I would love to have some more fun. And at that, I think it an hour and 21 minutes, which was supposed to have been a 30 minute uh, show. Oops. Um, we, we'll draw <laughs> the line that's here. One final question, though. What was that? One final question. Yes. Well, by the time we play this uh, recording on tomorrow's broadcast. Tonight for everyone else in North America and Europe. Tonight for, yeah, sorry. Um, what, what's going to be online and where is it going to be online? Uh, I will have everything. We'll get all the. Everything that we've discussed, uh, I will put out on removing the shackles um, in probably the next when I get ten it hours her, or it'll so. It'll be before before the show. Before the show, we will have it all online. It will be um, copied everywhere. We I, I we will have it going viral instantaneously. So uh, American Kabuki. Uh, we'll have it, and, and Kuala Pele, if we can get a hold of KP, um, and Brian, and everyone will have Brian, it. And, and May, so 5D Media. It'll 5D be really Media <laughs> over there, absolutely. So I'm going to spend this afternoon, while Heather's finishing up the last few bits and tidying up pieces, um, putting together, pulling together all the links so that people looking at this and hearing this for the very first time can go and click on the links and, and, and go back and see the original UCC filings and, and uh, some of the original shows, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And what I would like to say is that um, because I don't, you know, public trust website, we took that down so that energetically everything could be closed and the words, the uh, thoughts and the actions all were harmonious. So what I will say is this, is that, I'm going to put these out on the iLogo, but these are documents that I am actually using. And that way people can just see an example and they can recognize the documents for what they are in the uh, former financial system. They can actually see those and recognize them from that system. And I really want people to make an informed choice. So I'm not telling anyone to go and do anything, do what resonates within. But I will put the documents and the tools out that I know, that I've used, and that I know the value system to be, and then everyone dissect it, discuss it, take it apart, and figure out what is true for you using your tools of resonance within. Okay? Work together. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Lisa. Is there else you want to say, Bob? <laughs> You're welcome. No, I'm, I'm I'm excited. I'm ready to have I'm ready to have fun. No, me too. <laughs> me too. Oh, game, and oh, the, the fun. Begin. Oh, the next show that we're going to record, we'll have another call. You know, late tomorrow night for you there too, Lisa. Uh, 
and we start talking okay. about the big plans for the big doings, and that is going to be super exciting for this week. <laughs> but awesome. until then, I'm pretty much going to guarantee that I'm not going to be on the live show tonight. <laughs> Considering my track record for the last few weeks has not been very good of managing to stay awake that long. Um, but everyone knows how to get in touch with me. I'm always around on Skype, easily to get a hold of. So we'll talk to everyone later. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, D. And we will talk to you all. Bye, love. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, Wait. One, yes, one, Bob. While I, have, oh. while I have the both of you on the, on the line... My, my phone. <laughs> I've got your phone and I've got your thing. I'm going to ask uh, Yusuf to mail that over. Thank you. Sorry. I, I, I gave the, the uh, address. The teleporter was on the fritz. The teleporter was on the fritz. And they won't let us into the, into the portal house still. I, I don't know. Okay, guys. Well, um, the, the editing person can cut that off where they should. Um, yes. <laughs> Um, let me run around, get some stuff done, and I will talk to you, Lisa, when you wake up in the morning. I'll see you in a few hours then. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, Dom. Love you both. Bye, girls. Bye. Bye.